What's going on guys? I wanted to jump in today and chat about the coronavirus and how it relates specifically to type 1 diabetes. Now I've gotten a lot of DMs on Instagram, emails, messages, people asking, can we travel with type 1? Are we more at risk for you know, getting the virus itself because we are type 1? And uh, you know, what kind of precautions should we take? And these are all valid questions because we do have a chronic illness, right? But I wanted to answer a few of those questions from what I've discovered online and cite my sources as well. I looked up uh, the information on the coronavirus specific to type 1 diabetes uh, at GDRF and as well at Beyond Type 1. So I will link up those down below. You can check out the full articles, but I wanted to give my thoughts as well as answer a few questions. Number one, of course, being, are we more at risk for contracting the virus because we are living with type 1 diabetes? The answer given by GDRF is no. We are not more at risk. However, there are precautions that we can take, right? And these precautions are for anyone, not just someone living with type 1 diabetes, but precautions. Do you need to wear uh, a mask and have a full suit that's meant for a hazmat and you know take all these ridiculous precautions? No, you don't. Uh, one thing you can do is wash your hands a lot more often. <laughs> that's a great way to spread germs if you don't wash your hands. So wash your hands, avoid touching your face, your mouth, your eyes. That's going to be how germs get inside of your body, right? Bacteria, viruses, so be careful with uh, dirty hands and touching your face. Wash your hands and avoid touching your face. Now, another thing you can do is to avoid, if you can, going out into crowded areas, especially if you're in an area where there have been known cases of people uh, who have the virus itself. So, what you can do if you're going to a crowded location is try to maintain a six-foot barrier between you and anybody else who may have it. And it, obviously it's not possible for anyone commuting, uh, especially if you're in the subways like in New York. It's a bit difficult to do that, but if you come into contact with somebody who you believe may have, uh, either come into contact with the virus or has it themselves, wash your hands thoroughly, don't touch your face. Those are some great first steps that you can take. Now, a few of the symptoms that you might want to watch out for, and this list could go on, this is not all of them, but watch out for fever, difficulty breathing, uh, you know, dry coughs, for example. If you have any symptoms that do arise, especially if it's more like diarrhea and vomiting the last four and six hours, you need to contact your doctor. And keep in mind, nothing in this video is medical advice. Contact your doctor at the first sign of anything going wrong, especially because you are someone living with type 1 diabetes. And as someone who gets sick or develops another illness with type 1 diabetes, you have to be more aware of blood sugar fluctuations, of ketone presence, right? We're looking out for diabetic ketoacidosis, so testing your ketones, making sure your blood sugars are in range, making sure you have a closer eye on your diabetes management while you are sick because likely your blood sugars are going to be more difficult to manage in that time. And even outside of being sick, if you are in an area that may be at risk uh, with the virus kind of circulating, keep a close eye on both your blood sugars, your diabetes management, and your supplies. Make sure you have enough supplies to get you through any kind of quarantine that might go into an effect. So I make sure to have a couple weeks stashed in the fridge, make sure I have enough supplies, enough insulin, because if there were to be some sort of shutdown, I wanna make sure that I am able to survive. So I have both my diabetes supplies and enough food and low snacks to get me through multiple weeks where I might not have access to those supplies as I normally would. Now keep in mind with your diabetes supplies, the supply chain may have been interrupted, whether the trade routes were interrupted or maybe the supply manufacturer uh, has some kind of a change in schedule or in deliverability, whether it's your insulin pump, your CGM, your glucometer, your insulin itself, check out this article from Beyond Type 1. It's linked below. It's the same article that I'm referencing this whole time. They have a great uh, resource there. They reached out to the companies themselves to see if the supply chains were in fact interrupted or if they are moving along as planned. Now, when you go to wash your hands, use soap and water. Uh, warm water is going to be better. Make sure you lather for a lot longer than you think you need to. And uh, if you can, use an alcohol-based hand rub as well. And within traveling and diabetes, the planes are typically pretty clean, but anywhere you go out in public, honestly, treat it as if the world is lava. Use your knuckle to punch the, uh, or tap the ele elevator buttons, you know, no contact with other surfaces people are touching. Just play it safe and uh, good luck out there, guys. Don't let it slow you down. You can still go outside, but if you are an introvert, you can uh, enjoy this time where you're being told to stay home and avoid contact with people. And all jokes aside, this is a very serious issue. It is an epidemic and it is, you know, moving throughout the world at a somewhat alarming pace. So do what you can to stay safe, prep for it 
with diabetes supplies. Take care of yourself, watch your blood sugars, watch your ketones, and best of luck out there. Now for more information, again you can read the articles below. Uh, a simple Google search will also provide a lot of great results, but start down below with GDRF and Beyond Type 1. Have an awesome day guys. Make sure you subscribe, check out our other videos on diabetes, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Keep up the fight.